Before I begin, I wanted to say first and foremost that this video is not about Disneyland ever growing so big that it could offer more than Walt Disney World could. Because frankly, we all know it can't. Rather, I wanted to explore the idea that Disneyland could offer a well-rounded vacation that lasts a full seven days without running out of things to do. So kind of like Disney World, except without all the swamps and with a more streamlined roster of shops, restaurants, entertainment, and attractions. So with that out of the way, let's get down to speculation. Now, currently Disneyland Resort consists of two theme parks, three hotels, and a small little shopping district. At this point in time, there isn't exactly enough offerings to warrant a full seven day visit. I personally would see four days as perfectly sufficient considering the costs. Recently, Disneyland Resort in Anaheim, California had announced the Disneyland Forward Initiative, which is kind of like a political campaign in the sense that instead of officially announcing a resort expansion, they are actually trying to get the city to rezone the resort so that future expansions on the parking lot and shopping areas could be a possibility. If they get approved for Disneyland Forward, we could see both parks expand by a significant amount of acreage, and we'll see the addition of a fourth hotel, and possibly a thematically immersive new shopping district. Now I wonder, could Disneyland Forward be a huge stepping stone towards Disneyland becoming more like Walt Disney World? Let's take a step back and examine the Disneyland experience versus the Magic Kingdom experience. If you include the new Tron roller coaster, then Magic Kingdom has 33 attractions, not including live performances or meet and greets. However, over at Disneyland, if we include the new Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway, the park has 45 attractions, also not including live performances or meet and greets. You heard correctly, Disneyland Park has 12 more attractions than Florida's Magic Kingdom, and yet Disneyland is currently 10 acres smaller. If you count all the attractions at Walt Disney World using the same rule of thumb I just mentioned, then we get a sum of 76 attractions. But if you count the ones at Disneyland Resort, you get 68. Let me remind you that in Florida, they have four theme parks, whereas Disneyland has only two. Now, I know many of you Disney World fans will say, but Alex, the point of Disney World is that it has immersive environments and lots of stage shows to entertain crowds. And I agree. Some people, such as myself, prefer to have more rides, while others prefer to have a more relaxing atmosphere of live performances and huge landscapes. But I feel in terms of acreage, Disneyland Resort gives you more value for your dollar, because instead of spending money on four admission tickets, you only have to buy two you're technically spending less and getting pretty much more in return. There's also another aspect of the two resorts that differ greatly. At Walt Disney World, you see an abundance of attractions, some which I feel are completely pointless or unnecessary, such as the Grand Fiesta Tour at Epcot, or Lightning McQueen's Racing Academy at Hollywood Studios. But at Disneyland Resort, you don't see too much of that because they can't afford to waste valuable real estate on those kinds of attractions. So you could say that while Disney World offers a large menu to choose from, Disneyland selects the best choices of the bunch for you, which probably saves you time you might have wasted on an attraction you don't even like, such as Awesome Planet at Epcot. The final main difference between the two resorts is their navigability. In other words, how fast and easy it is to get around. If you are a frequent visitor to Disney World, you probably know exactly how to get around and what forms of transportation to avoid if you need to get somewhere fast. However, to the average guest, getting around Disney World can be somewhat overwhelming, and they might not know what times of day to avoid the monorails or the various boat taxis. It can also be time consuming to get from one end of the resort to the other if you are in a last minute time crunch. There's also the extra cost of paying for a taxi when you're not sure how to get to a certain hotel at night. At Disneyland, it's a little different. Sure, the monorails and trams can get busy, but your destination is always going to be less than a half mile away. You can easily walk to any part of the property in about 10 minutes. It's for this reason that many visitors praise Disneyland Resort's convenience. So with all that in mind, we can get to the question of what else Disneyland will need to make it a full seven day experience. Well, if the Disneyland Forward project goes through and Disney starts to add new lands to both parks, that could require you to stay six days just to see everything. And if Disneyland ends up building that large shopping and entertainment district surrounded by the fourth hotel, that would add even more things to see and do. The Disneyland Forward ideas alone are enough to make the resort worthy of a seven night stay. And what about the future? In 10 years, if Disney decides they want to add a third park across Harbor Boulevard, then that will give you even more of a reason to stay longer. 
So with three theme parks, two shopping districts, and four hotels, Disneyland Resort will offer a full and satisfactory vacation. So by that point, if you had to choose between Disneyland and Disney World, you might find yourself flying out to California instead of spending an extra couple hundred dollars on a trip to Florida. The question is, all things considered, would you agree with my opinions or do you still believe there's no way the average person would think a seven day trip to Disneyland Resort could be worth it? I want to reiterate, I created this video because I wanted to explain how Disneyland could offer a well-rounded seven day long vacation just like Walt Disney World. You don't need to have 47 square miles of swampland to give guests an immersive environment. You don't need to have four theme parks and two water parks to offer a week of entertainment. What you do need is to offer plenty of must-see attractions that you wish to ride more than once before you leave, and having easy access around the property without getting lost or having to take a taxi. Having all that land in Florida is great, I'm not saying it isn't, but perhaps one day, in the next few years, tourists will see that instead of spending a week at Walt Disney World, they can have just as much fun and possibly more convenience if they choose to spend that time at Disneyland. I want to thank everyone for watching and announce my humble gratitude for my channel reaching 15,000 subscribers. Thank you all so much, and I hope you all have a magical day.